Muy buenos días, ya estamos aquí en la Miranda School TV. Mi nombre es James Reporter y hoy es miércoles, día 13 de mayo. Y hoy tenemos un programa, pues como siempre, especial, diferente, sensible. ¡Ay! Nos encantan nuestros programas. <ríe> Vamos a empezar la mañana de hoy con Moving Like an Insect. Muévete como un insecto de la mano de los profesores de infantil. A continuación, Iria Ferreño nos va a hacer un cuento sobre los lumbas. Mm, Iria, ¿con qué nos vas a sorprender? <ríe> Luego será Pisen Van Gogh quien nos visite. Sí, sí, sí. El mismísimo pintor de los girasoles. ¡Wow! ¡Increíble! Luego, uno de los momentos más relajantes de nuestro programa. Um... Mindfulness, esta vez de la mano de la profesora Ana Carolina, quien después de relajarnos, vamos a empezar la marcha, marcha, a activar nuestro cuerpo de la mano de Ignasi. Pues nada, que tengas un súper feliz miércoles. Dentro vídeo. Let's move like insects. March like an ant. Hola, hoy os traigo una sorpresa. Tenéis que estar atentos y tranquilos para escuchar la siguiente historia. Los lumbas. Las cosas siempre habían sido así. Desde el principio de los tiempos, en el país de los lumbas vivían los malumbas y los palumbas y lo hacían de manera muy diferente y eso se respiraba en el ambiente. Gus, como todos los demás, lo tenía claro. Había cosas que eran de palumbas. ¿Qué por qué? Porque las cosas siempre habían sido así. A él, como buen malumba, le tocaba llevar gafas. Que si veía mal, no, para nada, pero las cosas siempre habían sido así. Sin embargo, los palumbas, incluso en los días en los que brillaba el sol, debían ponerse bufanda, como la tradición manda. Pero sí, las cosas siempre habían sido así. Un día, Gus estaba en la playa junto a su amigo Rouget. Decidieron que sería divertido bucear en busca de caballitos de mar, pulpos de colores, algas fluorescentes y experiencias diferentes. Pero ¡oh! surgió un problema. La enorme bufanda de Rouget pesaba tanto que no le dejaba volver a la superficie. ¡Ayuda, ayuda! No podía respirar. Tras mucho esfuerzo, Gus consiguió ayudar a su amigo. Y mientras lo observaba, a Gus se le pasó por la cabeza una pregunta que jamás se había formulado. ¿Por qué los palumbas tienen que llevar bufanda a todas partes? Pero rápidamente se contestó a sí mismo. Porque las cosas siempre habían sido así. 
Cuando se tranquilizaron, volvieron a la aldea con los demás. ¡Era la hora de la lumbada! La lumbada siempre había sido uno de los momentos favoritos de Gus, que, como buen lumba, disfrutaba de las tradiciones. Pero ese día no pudo evitar preguntarse, mm, ¿y si un palumba quisiera bailar en el otro lado? Eso sería imposible, se respondió al momento. Mm, ¿Y si un malumba prefiriera no llevar gafas un día? Nadie lo entendería. Entonces Gus decidió hacer algo que nunca antes se había planteado. Comenzó a caminar al estilo palumba, dándose un golpe en la frente cada cinco pasos. No estaba acostumbrado. ¿Qué, ¿Qué hizo el resto de la tribu? ¡Uf! Se pusieron tan nerviosos que comenzaron a dar vueltas sobre sí mismos haciendo un extraño ruido. ¡Mé! ¡Mé! Y desde un altavoz salió un ruido. Las cosas nunca han sido de esa forma. Es importante respetar la norma. Gus se sintió diferente al resto. Y Rullé, al darse cuenta de que estaba disgustado, le propuso ir a dar un paseo, como buen amigo. Mientras caminaban bajo el sol, ocurrió algo muy extraño. El azul de su pie comenzó a desteñirse. ¿Qué habrá pasado? Asustados, en busca de una sombra, se metieron en una vieja fábrica y allí se encontraron con algo que jamás se habían imaginado. ¿Qué será? Tayo dirigía un complicado sistema mediante el cual los lumbas recién nacidos estaban siendo clasificados. Gracias a una pintura especial, eliminaban cualquier rastro de su color original y decidían así si iban a ser palumbas o malumbas. Un solo botón ¡pum! decidía el futuro de sus vidas, cómo vestirían, su forma de caminar, de bailar, etc. Impresionados, Gus y Roger corrieron y volvieron a la aldea para contar a todos lo que habían visto. A partir de aquel día, las cosas nunca volvieron a ser de la misma forma y los lumbas volvieron coloridos, diferentes y divertidos. Y las cosas nunca volvieron a ser igual. Y colorín colorado, el cuento de los lumbas se ha acabado. Espero que hayáis disfrutado. Ahora os dejo una pequeña actividad en siso para que podáis completar esta historia. ¿Vale? Un abrazo muy grande a todos. Vincent Van Gogh Terry Knight Self-Portrait Café Terrace at Night The Olive Trees Sunflowers Irises Whitfield with Crows Branches with almond blossom. Wheat filled with cypresses. The yellow house. Starry night over the road. We've seen Vincent van Gogh artwork. 
Hello everybody, nice to see you again in another mindfulness lesson. So for today, we're going to be talking about something called self-talk. And self-talk is what we say to ourselves in different moments of our lives, right? Okay, so to start, we're going to practice our little mindful listening exercise and we're going to be practicing with the bell and what we're going to do is we're going to pay attention to the sound of the bell and the idea is for you to be focused on the sound, okay? And count how many times I ring the bell. Remember, mindfulness is helping us train our brain to be able to focus better in the present moment. Mindfulness helps us focus better so we can be better concentrated in school, in any activity we're doing, we can be focused in the here and the now, okay? Perfect, so are you ready for the mindful listening practice? So do you remember what position do we have to have before we do the mindfulness exercise? Does anybody remember? Okay, so the position is called mindful body and the mindful body is a body that's um, alert but also relaxed. So the most important thing is for you to have your back straight, your shoulders relaxed, you can roll them a little bit back and roll them a little bit to the front, very good. And I know you all do the mindfulness body really good. So if you're sitting on a chair or in your couch, you can put your feet on the floor, your hands in your lap, spine straight and shoulders relaxed. If you want to sit on the floor, you can sit on the floor with your legs crossed like an Indian pose. And uh, the most important thing is your back straight so we can be able to focus better and our mind is able to be more focused, okay? So we're going to close our eyes and we're going to take three deep breaths together. So we breathe in, out, in, out, in. to the sound of the bell. Remember, we are training our mind to be able to focus on the sound and count how many times I ring the bell, okay? Breathe very slow, and if a thought comes up, it's okay. Just try to bring your mind gently back to the sound of the bell. One deep breath in, out, another one in, out, very good. 
So now very slowly you can open your eyes. Welcome back. Very good. So how many times did the bell ring? How many times? Mm -hmm. Maybe some of you counted eight. Yes? Good. So it was eight times. Remember, if you counted seven or six or ten, it's okay. We are practicing to help our mind be able to focus better. Sometimes we can be more focused and sometimes we're not so focused. That's why we are practicing every time and the idea for mindfulness is to keep practicing, okay? Remember, you can practice mindful listening. You don't need a bell. You can just sit down in your room, very in a quiet space, and pay attention to the sounds you have around you. It's just stopping for a little bit and paying attention to the sounds. When we pay attention to the sounds, we are able to come back to the present moment and our mind tends to calm down from all the things we're doing in the day. Good? Perfect. Okay. So, for today's subject, we're talking about self-talk. So, what is self-talk? Self-talk is how we speak to ourselves. What things do we say to ourselves? It's very important we are conscious of how we are speaking to ourselves. Because if we pay attention to what we say to ourselves, we can see if we're saying nice things or if we're saying mean and ugly things to ourselves. Okay? So let's just put a little example. Let's say um, you are doing an activity that you have for school and you have to make a video of something, right? And you're very excited that you're going to make the video, but every time you try, you can't get it because it gets difficult and you don't know uh, maybe what to do and you don't like how the video turned out so you maybe start getting a little frustrated and maybe a little mad that things are not going the way you want them to go and and that it's not right so maybe you start speaking to yourself and saying things like Oh no, I'm not good enough. I don't know how to make videos. What is the use? Why do I do this? It doesn't make any sense, right? Like I am not good enough. Uh, I, I, I don't do this well. Okay, so sometimes we speak like that to ourselves and we say really hurtful things, right? So the idea for this exercise is for you to be able to be conscious of how are you speaking? What things are you saying to yourself? So, for example, the idea for this is to change that dialogue and start speaking nicelier to ourselves. So, if you're trying to do the video and it doesn't come out right as you like it, you can say stuff to yourself like, well, it's okay, I am going to keep trying because I know I can do this because I am really good and if I'm not so good I know I can do my best and send this video and my teacher will like it because I'm making an effort okay so you can speak that way to yourself and I am sure it's going to help you get through whatever you want to do do it better and do it with a more positive attitude okay because if we say like uh, things that don't give us so much like good feeling or good vibes like no you're not good enough the, the video is not gonna come out right and ah, you're so dumb or whatever probably the video won't come out right okay so if you say well I don't think this is right I didn't like that so much but it's okay I can try again uh, and I know I'm good at this. Uh, I know I can do this because I have done a lot of videos before and well, maybe today's not my day and I'm not so like, it's not coming out so good, but I know I can do this, right? So remember, the idea for the, the positive self-talk 
is becoming your best friend. We have to try and be our own best friend. So, how do you speak to a friend you love very much when that friend is maybe not doing so well in one thing and he's sad? So, let's just make um, a scenario and just imagine the situation. So, you're um, talking to a friend and your friend is sad and he's saying or she's saying like no i'm not good enough i don't know how to do anything right everything comes out wrong i'm just so dumb and that person is saying that about themselves what would you say to your friend what would you say to them just try to think a little bit if you find your best friend in that situation what would you say to him to feel to make him feel a little better? Okay, so you can say stuff like, no, of course you can do this. You are super intelligent. I know you can do this. Everybody makes mistakes. It's okay. But I know you're going to be able to do it better. So keep trying. Let's just try together. Maybe I can help you out, right? So you try to cheer your friend up. You're not gonna get, uh, approach your friend and say, yeah, you're right, that's not correct. You're, you don't know how to do anything. Like, why do you even try, right? You would not never say that to your friend because you love them and you want them to feel good and feel better. So, that same way that you treat a friend you love, you are going to try to treat yourself and you're going to try to speak to yourself as you speak to a best friend you love a lot. So, the next time you're trying something and it doesn't come out the way you like it and you get a little frustrated or the next time you feel a little angry or a little sad, remember to speak to yourself as you were your best friend. Remember to say kind words. Remember to be nice to yourself and have a positive self-talk instead of a negative self-talk that it's a negative self-talk is not going to help you you know like it's going to make you even feel worse so remember you can be your own best friend and this is really really awesome to know because when you um, are your best friend you are always going to have somebody here with you that it's you yourself to make you feel better okay so i know and i invite you to try this and this is being mindful of how we are treating ourselves okay so i really really encourage you and invite you to try this to try and pay attention on how you speak to yourself and if you see that you're not saying such nice words to yourself remember to change that talk into a more positive self-talk and i am sure it's going to help you okay awesome so how about we finish our mindfulness lesson with a little mindful breathing paying attention to our breath remember our breath it's a really awesome tool and an really awesome superpower we all have and when we pay attention to our breath we can help ourselves calm down and feel better so i'm going to invite you to try and do one minute of mindful breathing with me and just pay attention to your breath where the air goes in and out and how it goes in and out of your body okay and you can put your hands in that part of your body where you feel your breath coming in and out. For example, I feel it in my chest. So I'm going to put my hands in my chest and I'm going to pay attention how my chest goes up and down, up and down. Remember, being mindfulness is paying attention to what's happening in the present moment. So we're going to pay attention to our breath and see how that makes us feel. We close our eyes, we put our mindful bodies on. Very good. 
and we're going to pay attention to the air coming in and out of our body. So together we breathe in and out. In and out. In and out. Breathe very slowly. Keep breathing very slowly. Pay attention on your body and how that part of your body moves. So if you have your hands on your chest, just pay attention on how your chest moves. If you have your hands on your belly, pay attention to how your belly moves. And see how paying attention to your breath makes you feel. So try to pay attention on how are you feeling after doing this little time of mindful breathing. The breath is so powerful and when we breathe slow and consciously, it's so powerful, it helps us feel calmer like almost immediately. Well, for me it works like that. When I practice this, I really just connect with myself and I am really able to calm down okay so remember let's just like make a little uh, summary of what we learned today so first mindful listening you can practice with a bell if you have one but if you don't it's completely okay you can practice mindful listening listening to the sounds around your home okay that's number one number two we learned about self-talk how do we speak to ourselves? And it's important we speak how? Positive or negative? It's important we speak positive with, to ourselves, with positive and kind words to ourselves. We have to try to become our own best friends. Okay? And number three, we remember mindful breathing. Mindful breathing helps us calm down and be able to center ourselves and maybe take a little break from all the day that we're doing and doing and doing. When we practice mindful breathing, we are paying attention to ourselves and taking a little break. Sometimes our mind needs a little break. You see, we just did like one minute, so you can try that. And I really, really, really recommend you and encourage you to try and remember do your mindful breathing, maybe uh, at the beginning of the day, or if you have little trouble sleeping, or you wanna sleep better, you can practice mindful breathing at the end of the day. And remember, anytime you feel a little stressed, overwhelmed, like you have to a lot of things going on you can always take a little break and do mindful breathing okay so thank you thank you thank you so much for being with me today again I am super happy to have been with you today and I really hope you can practice all the things we learned okay so thank you very much and I'll see you next time bye hello good morning to everyone Again, I miss you so much. You know, the other day we danced on a stage. Yesterday we danced on a, an amazing park and it was so much fun. And today I had another idea and maybe you can help me to find it out. 
Maybe today we could go to somewhere where we love to go in summer, okay? Somewhere where we can sunbathing, we can have a swim, and we can play with the sun. Do you know what place am I talking about? Exactly! I'm talking about a beach. And then let's try to do the same that we did the other days. I'm gonna close my eyes. And I'm gonna imagine with all the details this nice beach. And let's see if it works, okay? One, two, three, four, Y hasta aquí el capítulo de hoy. Se despide James Reporter desde la Miranda School TV. Que tengan un buen día.